All right, so I wanted to go over the PL for October. Uh, October, I closed the month with 2351 US, so that's about 2900 Canadian. Uh, I'm gonna go over the trades as well. So, October, actually, let's go back to the PL. So, October looks much better than September, August, of course, July. And so, back to almost June level, April and May kind of low. And then we've got January, February, March, which were pretty good. So you could say October was close to maybe the January, February, March uh, PL. So maybe even closer to February. So not that far off. And like always, I tend to close my profitable trades a little bit too early, definitely missing out on uh, more profit. I mean, there's a trade on Spotify that I think I closed for $1.50. Actually, I could find it over here. Spotify. Yeah, this one here. See, I closed it for 188. This could have been easily max profit of uh, of $500 or $474. So that's an example of closing trades too early. Sofi as well or Sofi as well. Uh, close it for 367. I closed the cover call for $16. Could have closed it easily for it. It was a cover call. And I remember the stock was trading above 17.5. So I would have closed it for at least 17.5. So instead of making 367, it would have been 667. It would have been an extra $300. So that's easily, that would have probably brought me almost to 3,000 for uh, for the month. So I definitely closed my, I definitely closed my profitable trades too early, but um, in this market, I feel like if I don't, take my profits early I'm gonna regret it because pullbacks pullbacks happen uh, very often all right so October close trades I only, I only talk about the close trades these are trades at the bottom here these are trades that are still open so I've got about uh, 26 open trades across four accounts so this is for my margin account TFSA RSP and RESP uh, all right so let's go through the trades so October so these are closed trades over here so it's about for October I had about 26 trades so first one here we've got spy it's a spy put spread that I opened September 20th it was a put spread 416 411 so for, for a five point wide collected 80 cents with an expiry of October 18 so this is part of the the uh, spy put sh spread strategy that I like to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every 28 days. But I'm waiting for the market to pull back because right now we're at all time highs. It doesn't feel right to do it at all time highs. But uh, when I entered this one, there was a there was a good pullback on the spy. Here, let's look let's look at the chart here for this for spy. So this was a long time ago, September 20th. Let's do six month chart here. September 20th is around here. So yeah, it dropped to 441 when it was trading, when it used to be trading in the 450s. So I entered, at that point, I entered at 416. It can, SPY continued to drop, but it didn't breach. Then came back up again. And then when did I close it? I closed it uh, October 7th. So I closed it around, see it came, it even dropped even more to 428, did not breach. And October 7th, when it came back up to 438, I was able to close it for 30 cents, giving me $37 net profit. So it's not uh, not a big profit, but I mean, my starting credit was 80 cents. So I got about 50% of the, of the starting credit. Uh, and that's after commission. If it wasn't, if it weren't for commission, it would be more than 50% profit. Next year, I've got a Q, triple Q put spread, open September 30th. Let's look up the Q here. So most likely it was the same reason. Uh, it pulled back a little bit. So September 30th, we've got the Qs right over here. So the Qs dropped to 357 when it was trading at, at, at th in the 380s. I opened a put spread on the Qs at 340, 335 for 85 cents. Expiry October 27th, so 28 days. And then I ended up closing it for 40 cents on October 7th. So open September 30th and close seven days later, October 7th. It was, yeah, it came back up a little bit. I was able to close it for 40 cents, giving me a $32 net profit. So that's seven days later. The SPY put spread was 17 days. And then another Q put spread October 1st. So October 1st, as you can see, Q dropped even more. 
sold another put spread. This time I went lower to 335.330 for 85 cents, October 29th expiry. Ended up closing it for 35 cents, giving me a $37 net profit. And then October 4th, let's go back to the SPY. So must have been a good red day if I if I took this trade. So October 4th, you could see the SPY was at 428. So I opened a uh, put spread then at a 410, 405. So that's what I like about this strategy, strategy because it's spread out. Even if you didn't get the best entry the first time, you'll get a better entry the second time if the market keeps dropping. And if it's not dropping, well, then your initial entry was good and it's profitable. So that's what I like about this trade. It's spread out. But when VIX is low, it's kind of scary to, to do. But uh, yeah, when there's a good uh, pullback and when VIX is above 20, I like to do it. So 85 cents, close for 25 cents, $47 net profit. So all these put spreads on, on the ETFs uh, were a total profit of 153 US net profit. Next year, I got a naked put on Lightspeed when it pulled back. So let's look at Lightspeed here, LSPD. So it had a good pullback on October 4th. Can I do one month? Yeah, I could. All right, so it had a good pullback October 4th. Yeah, look at this pullback. I got in pretty good, actually. Actually, there was a better day on October 6th, but whatever. I got in October 4th, so pretty good entry at a 75 strike for three dollars and then i closed it three days later for two dollars and ten cents so i tend to close a little bit early that's my problem uh, giving me a 70 dollar profit but because it's so quick it's hard to ignore uh but definitely this is probably what was the expire november 19 this option is probably worth pennies right now so it could have made more whatever twitter naked put october 4th so i entered twitter as well on the same day it was a good pullback october 4th uh, uh let's not look at twitter this is ugly all right twitter 50 put i entered it where's october 4th october 4th is here so good entry twitter was at 57 i entered the 50 strike for november 19 expiry i, I did two contracts for dollar 13 ended up closing it for 62 cents three days later on October 7th. So when the, when the stock came back up again, as you can see from the chart. So I got in here, I got out here, and that gave me a um, $89 net profit US. And then Peloton, September 29th. Let's go to Peloton. I like trading Peloton and Spotify. They have good premiums and the stock is pretty much down. So it gives me confidence to enter because it's it's down a lot. All right, September 29th. So I guess I'll have to do the six month to, to see September 29th. So September 29th is right over here. Peloton's at 85. Decent entry. It wasn't the most. It wasn't the lowest entry, but it was a good entry. Uh, Peloton 75 entered at the 75 strike for three dollars and 45 cents. Closed it for 245. So that's eight days later, giving me an 88 dollar net profit after commission. And then Bitcoin BTF here that I closed obviously too early because I think Bitcoin kept going up after that whatever I just got out of it for $142 net profit I was it was it was held for too long I didn't feel like holding it for an extra max an extra profit that I could have made was like a dollar ten with an expiry of March so it didn't make sense to hold that long for for an extra dollar so I, I got out of it for 142 and I said to myself if it drops again then I could re-enter it didn't it just kept going higher Next year, I've got the Sophie covered call here, or SoFi covered call. I entered June 25th. I, it wasn't a good entry because so, SoFi kept dropping. I entered initially with one contract. I did 100 shares. And then I did a, a, another 100 shares when it dropped even more. Um, so giving me my average cost was about $14.10. I was able to get out for $16, close the whole trade for $16, uh, 108 days later giving me a net profit of 367. So that's, uh, yeah, could have been, this, is, this is the one where it could have been an extra $300 if I just held on to it a little bit. Uh, next here, Spotify covered call. I got in September 24th. So let's look at the chart here for Spotify. September 24th. Wow, look at Spotify, 290. I, I was in at 195 at a 200 covered call. So I could have easily gotten the full $5 here. All right, so September 24th, Spotify dropped to 230. I entered a 
$200 covered call with a November 19 expiry, paying only 195.26. So my max profit would be the difference here. If Spotify is above 200 by November 19, my max profit is 200 minus 195.26. Uh, and the, Spotify went up a little bit as time went by, October 12th, 18 days later. I was able to close the trade for 197.26, giving me a $188 net profit. Next here, Domino's Pizza. So this is an earnings trade. Um, went with a put spread at 450, 445 for a dollar. October 15 expiry. The next day, after hours, Domino's was down actually. But when the market opened, it just flew. I was able to close it for 10 cents, giving me $77 net profit. Then I've got Chewy here. Uh, Naked put up 55 strike because Chewy kept dropping. Let's look at October 18 here. Uh, October. 8. So let's look at Chewy here. October 8, six months. I guess I could do one month chart. So October 8, yeah, look at this. It kept dropping. Pretty good entry. I mean, it wasn't the best entry, but a pretty good entry. It's, uh, it's trading at around 62. I sold the 55 put for $1.26. I wish I did two contracts. I ended up doing one contract, uh, closed for 60 cents, giving me a small profit of $54. So that's kind of weak. Uh, Netflix here. Oh, so this was earnings. Netflix naked put at a 565 strike for $1. And I think we all know the story of Netflix. It just flies, just keeps flying. It's at 690. I had the 565 put for earnings. Right now, the stock's at 6.9. Ridiculous. All right, October 19, stock's up 6.37. I enter a 565 put for the same week expiry uh, for a dollar one. Close it uh, two days later for five cents. Netflix dropped a little bit after earnings, but then came back up. And as you can see, it's at 6.90 right now. Next year, I've got a Whirlpool. It was an earnings trade as well. Let's look at Whirlpool. This one is actually was a good trade. It was nothing complicated. 190 was pretty far actually. Collected a dollar, and I was able to close the next day for 10 cents. Uh, and I think October 22nd was a Friday, so it was the same. It was a one day exp one day trade basically, one day expiry. Uh, let's look at October 21st. Where was it? Yeah, so it was trading around 207 uh, before earnings, and then. After, when the market opened, it dropped a little bit, but then as you can see, it flew. I didn't even notice it flew. I would have let it expire worthless because it was on the last day of expiry instead of paying 10 cents for nothing, plus commissions. But anyways, net profit of $78. I had an Intel covered call here that I opened October 12 for 50.5. So a 52.5 strike covered call. I paid 50.5. I closed it six days later for 51.51, .51, so $89 net profit. And then I've got Peloton here. I believe this is, yeah, this was just another trade I had on Peloton. I like playing Peloton. Uh, it kept dropping, so I kept adding puts. And this was the last one I added, the 75, but it was the first one I closed because it came back up. And then later, so October, if you look at Peloton here, October 7th, I closed the 75 put. October 20th, I closed the 80 put, I think for a night. Oh, that's nice. A little bit more than a dollar so. It was, uh, I had sold it initially for $3.15, ended up closing it for $1.96, giving me a profit of $107 US. Uh, and then Alta here, put spread is was an earnings trade as well. Actually, no, it wasn't an earnings trade, sorry. So Alta just, there was, at some point, Alta dropped hard for no reason, for some reason, but I don't even care about the reason. But uh, there you go, look at this drop. So I got in October 20th, you could see over here, October 19, it drops to 3, it went from 407 to 385. And then the next day from 385 to 362 and even 350s. I believe I got in at, in the, at the lowest point. What I tend to do is I put an exaggerated order on and if it, and if it keeps dropping, then it'll fill. And it ends up, most of the time, it ends up being like the perfect entry. So I had the 335, 330 put spread on Alta because of this drop here, which I wish I knew why. I don't even want to know why. If it mattered, it would not have gone up right away afterwards. So yeah. So anyways, for a dollar, November 19 expiry, closed it two days later for 43 cents. So it's more than 50% profit, uh, but because of commissions and everything. So it, it's I'm left with $44, $44 net profit. And it's probably worth less right now if I check, but uh, doesn't matter quick profit next year path this was an old trade that i rolled a few times 
you could see here I initially collected three dollars and twenty cents, and then I I added a dollar fifty nine when I rolled it from October to November expiry. I kept the same strike, so total credit received was four seventy nine. Ended up closing it for three seventy, so that's forty seven days later, net profit of ninety seven dollars. And then Peloton, I had a covered call in my RSP at a ninety strike. I had entered for eighty five dollars, and then uh, October twenty fifth, so thirty five days later. Peloton came back up again above $90, $90. I was able to close it for $86.56, giving me a $144 net profit. And then I played Amazon a little bit early. So Amazon had, let's look at the Amazon chart, Amazon chart here. So uh, yeah, I guess we could do one, actually we could even do five days. What is this, October 20th? Yeah, I can do five days. Let's do one month. All right, so October 20th was a Friday, was it? I entered, no, sorry, where's Amazon? October 22nd. October 22nd was a Friday. Uh, so over here, you see this drop on Amazon on Friday before earnings. So Amazon had earnings. Uh, it actually had earnings Thursday. So it had earnings uh, October 28th after hours. But on Friday, October 22nd, I, oh, I didn't mean to go into the chart. Uh, let's go back. So on October 22nd on Friday, uh, Amazon dropped hard and I knew that it had earnings next week. So I felt since I always like to play the put side, so I felt it would be a good entry to do the put spread right now on Friday, even if it was it had earnings next week, I, Thursday end of the day, after hours. So I entered at a thirty two hundred thirty one ninety five put spread for a dollar, and then October twenty sixth, Amazon's around here. I was able to close it for forty cents, so more than fifty percent. So I decided to to take the profit and avoid the risk of earnings, and I was gonna re-enter for earnings, but I saw that Amazon was high at 3,400, so I didn't re-enter. And a good thing I didn't because Amazon fell hard after earnings. It fell to 3,300. But depending on the strike you would have taken for earnings, you, you would have ended up. It would have been a profitable trade that because it ended up coming back up to about. It closed at 3,372. So depending on your short strike, it would have been a, a winner even if it dropped. That's why I like to do out of the money put spreads because even if the stock drops you can still win on the trade. But of course, if it drops a lot, then it's hard. Then you have to save the trade. You can roll it to save it, or you take the loss, it's up to you. Um, so yeah, so that was Amazon. And then Spotify here was, an <laughs> Spotify was a naked put for earnings. I love playing Spotify. I can't believe I had the 220 strike. It's so sad to see when you look back, stocks at 290 and you like, I can't believe I was scared at some point. So yeah, so Spotify, I guess we could do five days. Spotify, October 26th. So Spotify was trading around here, 255. I went for the 220, same exp same week expiry, to play earnings, collected $1.10. Spotify after earnings flew, as you can see here, flew to 268. So the 220 put was worth pennies. I should have let it expire worthless, but I wanted the buying power back because it was taking about 4,000 or 5,000 buying power, this trade here, this naked put. So I closed it early so I don't have to wait uh, two or three days to get my buying power back. And obviously, so that gave me an $88 net profit. But obviously, it's at $289 right now. I should have definitely let it expire worthless. I would have saved $15. Next year, this is a trade that I had on something super risky, a biotech stock, CRTX. Let's, this is worth looking at the chart, actually. It's it's a, an interesting one. It might even deserve its own video, actually. $13. Beautiful. All right. So I entered this September 29th. So, yeah, anyways, it was trading in the 90s. Uh, actually, let's go six months back. September 29th. So it's trading at $93. Because it had, it was announcing something in November about a drug. If it's getting, if the if the if the if their Alzheimer's drug was uh, was passing some sort of a FDA approval or whatever, I don't care. But um, so because it was because there was so much uncertainty, uh, the premiums were ridiculous, ridiculously high. So the stock trading at ninety three. Uh, the fifteen put. Where's the put here? The fifteen strike. The fifteen put was worth $3. So that's like, what, 65? What's 90 minus 15? That's 80 points away. 80 points out of the money on a $95 stock, and I'm collecting $3. So to me, that that was a no-brainer. But for, as you can see right now, there's obviously a reason why it was worth this much. So 
So I sold the 15 put. I only did one contract because in my mind, I know anything's possible with biotech stocks. So I'm even considering if it goes to zero, then I'm, I'm out $1,500 minus the credit that I received. So I'm out about $1,200. So I, that's why I only did one contract. So I've ha I held a trade for a while. So I entered September 29th. I got out October 27th, so 28 days later. They were supposed to announce it in November. At some For some reason, it was announced earlier. And as you can see from the chart here, it was announced uh, Tuesday after hours. So Wednesday, the stock opens at $16. And as you can see, it keeps dropping, keeps dropping, and goes below my strike of 15 and even below uh, my break even and closes the week at $13.20. So it really wasn't for no reason that the premiums were this high. And but surprisingly, because there was no more uncertainty, even with the stock at sixteen dollars, there was such a volatility crush that the premium, this two dollars and seventy cent premium, was only worth a dollar fifty. In fact, it, it was worth ninety cents. But I had I panicked. I had a limit order to close this trade for three dollars. I was ready to take a loss. I just wanted to get out, and my order filled at a dollar fifty. So I got a better price than my limit order almost half than what I entered. So it wasn't the best uh, fill, but it was definitely better than my limit order. But the lowest of the day was 90 cents. I, even the open was 90 cents. I got it, I got, I paid a dollar fifty to close it. So because I sold it for 270, I still, got, I still made a profit out of this trade of $108 net profit. I'm not disappointed because it could have been much uglier. In fact, if I held on to it, I'm actually down, I'd be down about two dollars more than two dollars right now and it has a november 19 expiry so it still has a little bit of time value actually let's see if we can see the value of the options right now so i'm looking for the november 19 i'm looking for the put uh at a 15 strike so it's worth three dollars and 15 cents so you see it's worth more than what i sold it for so i'm pretty happy i got out of the trade yeah all right, um, next here, Google. This is a put spread that I did for earnings. So the day up before there, let's look at the chart. So Google, uh, let's go to the summary. All right, so where's Google here? So I entered October 26th, as you can see here, 26.90, 26.85 for $1, October 29th expiry. So same week expiry. And Google ended up going up after earnings. So it was an easy close. I closed for 30 cents because I wasn't sure um, Google actually was down after hours in pre-market. When it opened, it opened higher. So I wasn't sure. I just put an exaggerated order to close uh, quickly. So it got filled at 30 cents. But as you can see, it would have expired worthless. So I, I would I have a lot of trades here that would have expired worthless if I just held on to it. Actually, let's see. So uh, Netflix, well, 5 cents is not a big deal. 5, 10. Uh, Alta, no. Uh, Peloton, no. So... Uh, Amazon, Spotify, and I think they're, yeah, Domino's Pizza here. Many, so November 19, November 1st, October 29th. So October 29th just passed, actually. So all these would have expired worthless. So about a dollar eight. So $180 that I missed out on for closing trades a bit early, plus commissions, so five times one two three four five six seven so 100 180 plus 35 so about uh, 215 so about 215 dollars wasted easily so would have put my pnl an extra 215 plus an extra 300 from the sofi sofi trade and maybe an extra maybe 200 from spotify so see how it could have easily been a different pnl if uh, if i had just uh, let some of my trades expire worthless uh, what else? Uh, Google this one as well. I could have let it expire worthless. Shopify, Facebook. Uh, this one I had to close. So actually, let's let's add it again. So for the month of October, let me see which ones I could have let expire worthless. And I basically paid commission for for nothing. So what is this whirlpool? Uh, Ten cents. Uh, five cents. Yeah. Ten. Domino's Pizza, um, October, October 29th, yep, yep. And maybe an extra, and then an extra 300 for, for Spotify. So I've got 251, so $251 plus one, two, three, four, five. Actually, let's look at the count. I've got 11, 11 times five is 55. So 
250 250 plus 50 so about 300 dollars plus an extra 300 dollars from the sofi trade so that's 600 dollars and maybe an extra 200 from spotify so it's about 800 dollars i could have added to my pnl 800 us i could have added to my pnl if i just let some of my trade if i held my some of my profitable trades longer all right, so Google was a profitable trade after earnings. Shopify as well was interesting because Shopify dropped after earnings. It even went all the way to 1330. My short strike was 1320. Uh, I just ignored it. I was going to go to expiry and then roll it if I have to. Uh, and, and I ended up flying back the same day. So I closed it for 21 cents. Uh, so that's $66 net profit. Facebook. It was a was had earnings on Monday. I entered for a dollar two three ten, a short strike. Now the stock after hours and pre market was up to almost three forty. When this when the market opened, it dropped all the way down to three fifteen and even lower. And then during the week, it even touched three ten. Might even might have even gone to three oh nine during the week. I did nothing. I held on to it. And then October twenty eighth, so one day before expiry, it when it announced when Mark Zuckerberg announced that. Uh, Facebook is becoming meta or whatever. Uh, stock went up. I was able to close it for 20 cents, um, giving me a net profit of $69. And obviously Facebook ended up closing above 310. Let's see, close at 323. So this one would have expired worthless as well. But the hard part is holding so many trades to expiry. What if we have one bad uh, pullback? Would have been really, would be really unlucky that I, I did not close these trades for pennies, just to save pennies. And then I have to deal with all of them and try to save them and manage them. So that's the reason I try to close trades early. Here at Twitter, I've got a naked put. I had a naked put at, on Twitter for earnings at 56. Wasn't uh, it wasn't the best entry, so I added another one at a 54 strike for 95 cents. Twitter and en en ends up the week uh, ends up closing at uh, TWTR. Ends up closing at about 53.50, I think. Yeah, 53.54. So I ended up closing this one here for 55 cents, giving me $28 net profit. And the 56 one, I had to roll, which you could see over here. So I had to roll it. I added a contract and I brought the strike lower. So I went from 56 to 52.5. I added a contract, but my total credit now received is... Um, is a, a dollar two minus two fifty three plus four seventy six. So three dollars and twenty five cents is a total credit received. So my break even on Twitter right now for December seventeen is fifty two point five minus my three twenty five received. So it's about forty nine dollars. That's my break even on Twitter right now. So I'm not I'm not worried about it. Now what annoyed me about Twitter is at the open I had a chance to close uh, the fifty four strike. I had a fifty six strike initially. It's not there because I turned it into into a 52.5 strike but i had a chance to close them both together for about 50 cents um that was at the open but then after that twitter just dropped and uh, yeah i couldn't that 50 cent wasn't available anymore to close both of them together it could have been a profitable trade if i closed it the same day even for i could have, i think i even had the chance to close it for a dollar so i had initially collected a dollar from the 56 put and 95 cents from the 54 so if I close it for a dollar, I'm left with 95 cent profit. I didn't take that trade. And it, Twitter just kept dropping. I, I really had hopes. I really believed that it was going to come back up, but it, I guess I was wrong. So yeah, and uh, yeah, so these are my close trades for October and that's my PNL. And these are my open trades now. So I've got a uh, naked put on pins that I'm playing for earnings next week, November 5th. It's worth almost three dollars this one right now, so it's a bad entry. I'm actually I might re-enter next week on pins. We'll see. I've got a put spread on PayPal when it dropped, when it said when it, news came out that it was gonna buy pins and pin Pinterest went up, but and, and PayPal dropped, but now PayPal just continued to drop. So it's not closable anymore. I've got a Baba covered call in my TFSA. I've got a Roku put spread that I had rolled from uh, a while back. Uh, total credit $1.21, dollar twenty one two nine is my strike, but it's got earnings next week, so that might be a problem. Hopefully, it doesn't drop below two ninety. 
I've got a Fiverr put spread, collected a dollar, not closable. I've got a naked put on posh that I'm gonna have to roll for sure. Might even have to roll uh, very far. Corsair covered call, not bad. Uh, skills covered call, pretty bad. Pinterest naked put at 65, so this was from last earnings. I've got two contracts, collected $5. This one's obviously very bad. I think Pinterest is around 44 right now. So this one's really deep in the money. It's not doing great. I'm going to have to roll it. I'm going to wait after earnings and then roll it. Maybe maybe the stock flies. We'll see. Probably not. All the social media stocks dropped after earnings. Uh, this one's not bad. Butterfly covered call. Twitter naked put it. This is the one I just rolled. I entered a new Intel covered call after earnings because it dropped hard after earnings. I've got a naked put on Snap that I had to roll. I've got two contracts here at a 60 strike. So I played this. Uh, before earnings. Oh, yeah. So if you watch my video my previous video where uh, Snap dropped 30% after earnings, I had a 68 put It got completely breached because Snap was at 55. So I ended up roll adding a contract I, And I rolled it to the 60. I rolled it down from 68 to 60 strike went to December net credit of a dollar 67 Because I added a, a second contract. So now my break-even is around 58.5 uh, for December and I added another put on its own for December as well but a 50 strike for two dollars because snapchat had dropped so much and now this one is actually worth three dollars so it's not even the best entry but at some point it was profitable but not enough to close but it was like maybe fifty dollar profitable but yeah not enough to close but yeah now it's now it's uh, showing a loss uh, luminar covered call not great rocket covered call not great and then all these here are pretty bad pretty pretty bad uh roku here is just a naked put it's just a put spread that i tried to save so i rolled it as a naked put and so that it doesn't take a lot of buying power out of me i picked the 160 strike and i went all the way to january 2023 i mean if roku drops to 160 i think that would be a good deal so i'm not too worried about it but I, this is basically a put spread that went bad and i'm trying to save it by rolling it naked but because i didn't have the buying power for it i went super far so i can pick a, a, a low strike because the more out of the money the strike is the less buying power it takes and these ones are pretty bad as well so these are my remaining open trades and let me just show you the buying power on roku so roku i believe is a 50 percent margin requirement stock with quest trade so market price is around 315 my strike is 160 so it takes about twenty four hundred dollars of capital so much better than if i had for example if i had the 260 it takes ten thousand dollars of capital so yeah that's, that's that's why i rolled it to 160 but if the stock does drop to 160 it's going to take eight thousand dollars of capital for me but if that happens i mean something something bad is happening all right so if you have any questions in the comment section below like always, if you can open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral link below to get $50 in free commissions. Thanks for watching.